Hi everybody, it's Martha. Um, welcome to day nine. I did not record yesterday and I'm going to show you something and not talk a whole lot about it because it makes me emotional. But um, yesterday was the one year anniversary of us having to say goodbye to my little papillon, Evan Almighty. And it was a hard day for me. So the heart that I made was this. And he was a papillon, which means butterfly in French. And he was the love of my life, to tell you the truth. So um, there's that. Okay. <sighs> Over with. I've never had such a hard time letting go of an animal. And I've had lots of animals in my life. Anyhow, um, so today I'm going to work on white. And I tried a few different combinations with different fabrics. And I just want to keep it simple. And so I'm just going to stitch this on and hopefully not poke myself too much. And um, I don't have a whole lot to chat about, unfortunately. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to have a discussion about that. So um, I am not going to record every day. And I am going to make a heart every day, but because I don't have a lot to discuss, these videos are going to get quieter and quieter as time goes on, I think. So, um, I think just to avoid boring everybody and to avoid me stressing about what to talk about, whether I'm filling the space, etc. I am probably just going to film uh, maybe once or twice a week. Uh, once a week I would just do a certain heart um, on the video and show you the other hearts that I did during the week. Um, you know, it's, it's just really hard. And I think, although I had many really sweet, beautiful, loving, supportive comments at the beginning, this is not very interesting for most people. And my discussions are not very interesting for most people. So um, the comments and the views and everything have really slacked off, um, you know. I think when I was making journals, it was a lot more interesting. I don't know. I, I don't think I'm that interesting to begin with. But anyway, because I was doing something different every time. So, and I was, even then I was only recording like, I don't know, twice a week, three times a week, I think. And even then it was a struggle. And for me, this project was supposed to be about peaceful stitching and um, I forgot to put my step stool under my feet. So <laughs> we are a rock in here because I got my knee crossed, which probably isn't going to last long because that's my bad knee. Uh, but like I was saying, even when I was doing the journaling stuff, you know, and life was more normal for us. Tony was working, and we still, both dogs were still alive, and since the pandemic started, you know, things got a lot quieter for us. Tony retired, and we said goodbye to Gabby in September of 2020, and then we said goodbye to Evan in March of 2020. Oops, sorry. Jiggle, jiggle. <laughs> In March of 2022. Uh, so, um, and I struggled. Last year I struggled a lot with that. Um, Evan really was my best buddy. And we did a lot together. Especially at the beginning of our relationship. When we first got him when he was a year old. So, anywho's. Um... 
So yeah, a, a lot has changed, a lot. And I am going to sneeze, so I'm gonna put you on hold and go get my step stool okay, on. Okay, I'm back, step stool in place and sneeze is over with, hopefully. You do not, <laughs> you do not wanna hear me sneeze. I would blow your ears out. So you can thank me for not torturing you with that. So anyway, I'm going to work a lot harder today to stay on camera. That was the other thing. My last video really stunk because I know I was off camera a lot. And for those of you that are hopefully pulling up your stitching or working on journals or whatever you're doing, your paper crafting or crocheting or whatever you do when you're just hanging out with me, which I do greatly appreciate you hanging out with me. Oh, this thread. Um, I don't know what the hold up here is. <laughs> it's starting to make me mad. Untangle. Untwist. Okay, that wasn't a whole lot. Um, yeah, so... Hopefully, you're just pulling some stuff up and not really paying attention to whether I'm on screen or not. Because it's not like I'm teaching you anything. It's not like I'm doing anything new or creative or, you know, different or giving you any hints or tips or being useful in any way. But I'm just hanging out, creating from my heart and... You know, that's the other thing I found that the last, well, ever since I started, really, all the videos, I feel like I'm very rushed. Like, I, I don't want to bore you with just stitching like this. But, you know, that's the creation I'm making, and I shouldn't stress about it, and I shouldn't feel rushed. I mean, that's not what these hearts are for. I, I want them to have a lot of peace in them so that if I do give them away or sell them or, you know, whatever, use them for patches, whatever might happen, I want them to have peace involved in them while I'm making. And I found that I wasn't getting that by recording them every, me making them every day because it's a struggle. It's a struggle to uh, feel like I don't have to rush and to not feel like I'm boring you. So, you know, if we do interesting things or I'm do, I decide to do something a little different with the hearts in the end, you know, I may get bored with this in the, in the middle of all this. <laughs> you never know with me. All right, Martha, turn your work, do a straight stitch. How? So, um, yeah, so I feel like it's probably to both my advantage and your advantage that I don't film every day even though that really is what I wanted to do and it is what I thought I might do I don't know if it's worth it for you guys and it is becoming a little stressful for me so I think I will try the once a week and I mean I'm not sure that'll help my views any or anything. It's not like I'm going to ever reach, you know, I'll never get a YouTube award for 100,000 followers. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I know that. Oh, uh, but, um, and there's, there are way more talented, interesting, uh, giving people out there, creative people out there than me. And this I know. So, we will just 
they're they're way more talented and have many more years experience doing this and they're more knowledgeable and they are you know there's a lot a lot of people out there that have a lot more to give not that I'm not a giving soul but um knowledge wise not so much as far as this is concerned I'm just doing this because I wanted to give myself a project to do. I wanted to challenge myself to stick with it for 100 days, which I really am enjoying making the hearts. That's not my problem. My problem is finding things to talk to you guys about. So I think we'll give the once a week a try see how that goes and I don't think anybody will really miss me that much <laughs> although you all were so very kind like I said with your comments at the beginning when I came back after being gone for well over a year <clears throat> oh Martha come on find something to do it's gonna have to be this one So, I did not iron this heart before I started. <laughs> I think you can tell. If they're really bad, I will iron them. But this one I could always iron after. <clears throat> so, this piece here came off of a doily. I had a, an acquaintance friends I, I call friends something in, in in a different category let's just put it that way um, you know friends keep in touch with you and they make an effort to contact you and stuff like that but this person I know through a spinning guild and she had a bunch of linens that I think her mother-in-law used to make market I don't know anyway and this came off of one of those, so um, I appreciate the fact that she was giving them away and then I can now use some of them for my projects. That's always nice. Free fabric, possibly vintage fabric and in good shape. is always appreciated <laughs> always she was just trying to find a good home for this stuff so. but i don't see her because i don't go to the spinning guild anymore spinning and weaving guild because well first pandemic second I'm just not into the spinning at all anymore because the only thing I ever spun was wool and I can't wear wool. I don't like to make garments out of wool. I don't um, weave a whole lot anymore. So even though I was weaving with cotton, I made myself vests, I made myself jackets, uh, I made myself table runners and placemats and all kinds of things uh kitchen towels drying towels dish towels I guess you call them and um so I made a lot of that stuff and honestly it's just you know you, you run out after a while what are you going to do with it I mean I've had so many people ask me what I'm going to do with these hearts they're just amazed I'm going to make a hundred hearts a hundred hearts isn't that much really and when I started thinking of the ideas that I could use them for, you know, I got pretty excited about it. So now I could leave that loose, but if this was going to be a patch, I probably wouldn't want that flapping in the wind, right? So I'm going to sew this down. And there was, um, there was a little line there, little holes 
And that's why I sewed the top straight across like that. Boy, I need to clean my screen. <laughs> I'm trying to look at the screen and it's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Let's see. How do I want to do this? So I hope this finds you all well and that you had a good day yesterday. We did climb into the van and we took a ride to, we have two places that we normally go. There's one town to the west of us and it's still considered a town, not a city um, by size, I guess. And then to the east of us, we go to Fredericksburg. Um, we're about halfway in the center. It takes us about the same amount of time to get to either one. Um, way more traffic going into Fredericksburg than into the other town, uh, Culpeper. And so um, we took the van because we try and take it out for a drive once a week and you know got to keep it going it's a it's an automobile really it's a it's a vehicle not an automobile but it's a vehicle it's a ram promaster van that was made by uh made into an rv by winnebago so um We take it into town and Tony goes to the library and he buys books for like 25, 50 cents from the library bookstore. And he's read so many of them and taken them back that a few times he has actually <laughs> picked up the same books twice <laughs> and brought them home, paid for them, brought them home, realizes he's read them already and then takes them back <laughs> so, and that way the bookstore can resell them and get the money for them and that's great we, we're we all good with that I mean when you're buying hardcover books or paperback books for that price you can't beat it right so I'm trying to make sure I'm tacking it to the to the actual fabric underneath oops come back here so we're playing thread chicken now I'm trying to keep this hand anchored down so that number one I'm not moving all over the place and number two uh, I stay on screen. Of course this mat is wool, it's starting to itch, get itchy on me. So we did that and then we drove to the other end of the town, drove through the town to see what changes have been taking place since we last drove through town because there's a way to get around the town and go to the other side without driving through town. Speed limit's 25, there's a little bit of traffic there, stoplights, stuff like that. So we don't always go through town. Saw a couple new things. Um, and we stopped at a gas station where Tony gets a discount because he uses a discount card. And um, basically I stayed in the van the whole time. He went into the library by himself. I didn't really want to go in. Just, Again, feeling a little down, but it felt good to get out of the house. And um, the last time I went into the library, I don't know about you guys. I don't know when the last time was any of you went into the library. But our library shelves are like not very well stocked. And our library, it's like they took a bunch of stuff out and condensed it. I don't know if libraries are supposed to get rid of books after a certain amount of time. I have no idea of how libraries work, really. I've been going to them for most of my life, but yeah, I, I don't know how they really work as far as that goes, but 
Um, okay. That's enough thread chicken. <laughs> We're gonna tie this off. But we are, um, when, the last time I went in, I looked for like embroidery books and there was almost nothing there. And that went for the entire craft shelf. Like there used to be, you'd walk down a row and the whole left side, four shelves high, would have craft books on them. And there was, first off, they changed them to the other side of the shelf, so I was really confused and lost because I couldn't find them. I have no idea what this thread is. I might have got it from Steph Francis. If you guys know, let me know. I don't know if I got this from... I don't think I got it when I went to Artistic Artifacts. Might have, but I don't know. I might have got it from Steph Francis too, I, but it doesn't say Steph Francis on it. So I'm not sure. Anywho's, back to the library. Yeah, so I went I went and finally found, it took me two, <laughs> two times of walking up and down the end aisle to figure out where the heck the craft books were. And there was like, Maybe, maybe there were two shelves and they weren't even full all the way across. And I'm telling you, it was like, I was shocked. And there wasn't anything very good in there. Sorry, concentrating. You know, do you ever find that when you're trying to thread a needle, if you change the end that you're trying to thread, somehow it works better? I've been finding that a lot lately. <laughs> it's very interesting. So yeah, so I didn't go in because I went in last time and looked around and found absolutely nothing I wanted to get. And, um, so I hung out in the van. I had to measure the, we have a combination microwave slash convection oven in the van. And I had a round pan with a, it's like an air fry rack on top of it, like a wire rack that fit right into the pan. But because I've gotten rid of a lot of non, sorry, rid of a lot of toxic items in the home, the copper nonstick pan left as well. And so I need to replace that. So when we travel, we eat a lot of potatoes and Tony really likes baked potatoes because plant-based eating is, Tony, Tony's not a, what's the word? Eclect, eclectic, not eclectic. He's, he doesn't like a big variety of food. So almost every night he has either a baked potato or boiled potatoes, or something along. Oops, that's way too in there. <laughs> I don't like that. Um, yeah, so in order to bake the potatoes in the, we don't microwave because, you know, toxins. So, um, to use the convection oven, it has to have a rack in it. And the rack that they give you when you get it is odd. It's shaped odd. It's round. Okay, so that's the shape. But it has these legs they put on it, and they're weird. Like, there's legs on the bottom and on the top, and you can't balance anything on that. Anyway... And the legs are longer on one side and narrower, uh, not as long on the, they're shorter on the other side. And 
it's an odd rack. So I'm going to buy a new rack that other people have used with this brand of van and convection oven. And it's smaller and it folds up and stays out of the way. And so I have some, I've replaced all my uh, cookie sheets, cooking pan, baking, flat baking pans <laughs> with stainless steel. And so uh, I got them in a variety of sizes and there's some really small ones. So I'm gonna see if the small one fits in there. But, you know, it has the round rotating glass shelf in it. And so my pans are rectangle and I need to find a round stainless steel, like cookie, um, pizza pan kind of sh shape. So I've been searching Amazon for that. And because I can't find stainless steel pans around here. Cookie sheet type pans, sauce pans and fry pans, yes. But like cookie sheets, they're all aluminum. And I don't want aluminum. I want stainless steel. All right, I think I'm going to do, we're only at 21 minutes, so I think I'm going to do a couple of French knots in here to kind of go along with these. So, um, oh, that matches pretty well, huh? <laughs> I like it. So I do need to do that, but I, so I had a tape measure in my bag and I, I carry a tape measure, little, little retractable tape measure in my purse all the time. You never know when you're going to need one. So I measured and I will go on to Amazon and find the right sizes that I need. Oops, not too close. And get that set up so when we go away, we can bake our potatoes. I love a, a fresh, Tony bakes his in the morning, puts it in the refrigerator and then eats it, which is actually supposed to be better for your body. Your body digests the sugars in the potato better that way they say. Same with rice. If you cook your rice and then refrigerate it, it does something so that your blood sugar doesn't, you know, go all over the place. <laughs> Which mine sometimes does. I'm not diabetic, but if I don't eat the right things at night, I can have a bit of a shaky spell. So, um, I like mine cooked fresh, baked fresh, hot out of the oven. Tony and I are so different in so many ways. <laughs> it's kind of hilarious and kind of scary at the same time. But, you know, 47 years together. We're more different than ever. I like this with the nuts. It'll be pretty when it's done. I like it. I've been wanting to do a white one. I think I mentioned in one of the previous videos that um, I've been looking for white fabric. Well, I dug through one of my bins that I had older fabric in, and don't you know, I found some white fabric, but it wasn't, I didn't use it today. <laughs> So there will be another white one coming, because why not, right? OK, 
Okay, good chicken. One more, can I get one more? Sure, of course I can. This is a pretty thin thread, so that's why I'm wrapping it four times. Nothing wrong with that. That's okay. Gotta do what you gotta do. I did find one of my larger pair of scissors. These things are ginormous. These are the ones I generally use. <laughs> and they don't even fit all the way on screen. There. So they are and they're heavy, but they do cut the fabric in a nicer, um, they don't chop it up when you have to stop and might have to iron that down. That, I think that's only curling because that's curling. All right, more thread, Martha. So I did that while Tony was in the library, measured the microwave slash convection oven. And as we get some nicer days, once tomorrow is over and my test results all come back okay, then I'm going to start loading stuff in the van that can be in the van. We can't keep everything in the van because, number one, I don't want to attract, like, mice. Um... And we have a lot of squirrels around here. I don't want them getting up underneath. Okay, I think I'm sliding here. I'm going to move you over just, just a teensy bit. There. Stop. No shaking. Okay. And um, so I don't keep food. In the spring, we have a real bad problem with ants coming off the trees that we have. We have dozens of oak trees here and other trees. We practically live in a forest. We live in the woods. Let's put it that way. Woods is in the name of where we actually live. <laughs> so, um, we do have a problem with ants in the spring. But... So I don't keep food, even canned food, because we have really cold winters. It can get, we might not get a lot of snow typically, but we get a lot of, we do have cold days, way below freezing. Uh, many, many days that are freezing or below, I should say. Uh-oh, I think this one, I'm going to mess it up. Please don't mess up. Please, please, please don't mess up. when I mess up knots. So, um, yeah, we have to be real careful. And I don't keep clothing in there because I don't have enough clothing to have clothes to wear from the house and clothes to wear from the van. <laughs> so every time we go somewhere, I have to repack everything. The pots, the pans, the clothing, the toiletries, the food, the bedding, everything. And it, it's kind of a pain in the rear end. Oh, sugar, come on. I didn't hold on to that one well enough. Okay, oh, that's a little better. And I've made checklists, but things are constantly changing. So, yeah, uh, the last time we went away, I'm going to have to tack that one down at the end. Last time we went away, I forgot my non-toxic shampoo, but I was able to find a different brand that I felt okay with using. I don't use it all the time. But in a pinch, I was willing to use it. And uh, so 
we were able to find that in a store. <clears throat> um, we've gone away before and Tony's forgotten his comb. So I carry an extra comb. <laughs> and I ask him 16 times, are you sure you got your comb? And, you know, there's things you forget. Usually you can stop in a store and buy what you need. But because I am doing the low toxin lifestyle, um, most of my stuff, of course, has to come from Amazon because I can't find it locally. All right. I like that. Yep. So, yeah, it's uh, food is easier to replace if you run out or forget something. And we don't have a lot of space because... It's a van. Now, how did I get a knot there? How? How does this happen? There are gremlins, I swear, that get in your thread. And, of course, it's twisted, so. All right. So I'm going to go back and tack that one down. And then we'll be finished. And I do that for my own sanity. It's this one right here. So all I do is go up. I grab that little loop that's sticking up. And I try and pin it down. That worked. So it's not sticking up anymore. And I'm happy with that. So this is heart number nine. All done. And I'm going to let the lace hang over. I like the lace to hang over. And the little bit of background... I mean, where it's muslin, well, this canvas, at least it gives it a little bit of contrast. So there's heart number nine. So I will see you all, you know, maybe in about a week. Thank you so much for being here with me, and I appreciate it. I love you bunches. Give me a thumbs up if you would, please. I'd appreciate it. And let me know what you're working on. Take care, everybody. Love you. Bye.